Reddit, tell me your glitch in the matrix stories. This will probably get buried. When I was around 20, a few years ago, I kept having dreams about a woman with long black hair named Arura, pronounced Aurora. They were different dreams but for some reason, her distinct face and name always ended up in them. It got to the point where I would wake up frustrated and confused, trying to google her name or find out how I was connected to her. After a few months she stopped showing up and I dismissed it, thinking my brain was just being a scumbag. Fast forward a few years later, Halloween 2009, I'm in the car with a friend stopped at a gas station. I'm about to pull out and merge onto a highway when I get a phone call from a random number, so I stop the car but no one answered. There was a person behind me who grew impatient, honked at me, and then swerved in front of me instead of waiting for two seconds for me to move. Second they get on the highway, some silver civic loses control of their wheel and crashes into the car that swerved in front of me. I called the cops and waited at the gas station for them to come. Turns out the drivers of both cars died. It 100% would have been me if I hadn't have got that phone call. Called it back a few hours later out of gratitude and curiosity, rang three times and went to voicemail. Hi, you've reached Aurora, please leave your name and number. Never had goosebumps like that in me life. Called it again the next day, because I was that confused about the whole situation. Some woman answers, we get to talking, I tell her my entire story including the dreams I had. She tells me she doesn't know how I got her number and that she never called me as far as she remembers. Weird. Ask her if she has a Facebook to confirm if she is in fact the woman in my dreams. Check her Facebook, holy fuck, it's her. If that's not a glitch in the matrix then I'm just bet shit crazy. Driving home on a storm day, I see that a side road up to the local golf course is blocked off by flashing barricades. I also spy a Mercedes parked past the barricades with its hazards on. I stop and walk up to the car to see if they need help, I'm an EMT, I shine my light in the back seat to see a man slumped over apparently asleep. Thinking I've got a few drunks, I move up to the driver window and rap on the glass and shine my light in, the driver is sitting bolt upright, unmoving staring straight ahead. My window wrapping or light doesn't cause him to blink, flinch or move. I look over and the passenger is slumped forward onto the dash. This begins to creep me out, I call down to the sheriff station and request a code, 2, no light slash sirens, unit up to my location to help me check them out, doors are locked. While on the phone I walk back to my truck to get my go bag, as I'm on the phone with dispatch, she asks me to get a license number for the car just as a PG&E, power company, cherry picker truck comes rumbling down from up the closed road. I move to go around the truck to get the plate number, and the car is gone. I talked to the driver of the truck and he said there was a 80-foot tree down across the road, and that he didn't think it'd be open for a day or so. So the question is, the hell did the car go? Tree up one way, barricades down the other. It's kept me a bit unsettled when stopping at accidents slash hazards since then. This happened to me in third grade, and it scared me so much I started crying and had to go to the office to talk to the principal about it. I was in the hallway for misbehaving, and my neighbor Tad, a year younger than me, came walking out of a class to my right, passed in front of me and headed down some stairs. We said hi to each other. About 20 seconds later, he walked out of the same class, passed in front of me, and headed down the stairs. I just stared at him, confused and afraid, and he looked back like, why the f are you looking at me like that? I never realized how much it was like Matrix Deja Vu. Edit, I thought of a second example of this, and as long as this thread is so popular, I may as well share it. A few years after this incident, my sister and I were hanging in the living room, watching TV. We both saw our mom walk through the other room and through the adjacent hall. Maybe 20 minutes later, she came in from the backyard. My sister and I looked at each other confused and asked her how she got back outside. She didn't know what we were talking about, she had been outside for hours. No one else was home, of course. Oh man, I have one of these that involves the Matrix. I got my wisdom teeth out in 2000 right around the time that the original Matrix came out on VHS. I was bombed completely out of my mind on Percocet after coming back from the surgery, I had awful wisdom teeth, and my mom basically just dropped me in bed and went and rented the movie for me because I'd never seen it in theaters. I remember being irritated that the sun through the window was making the TV glare, but being too out of it to get up. A little bit after the black cat glitch in the Matrix scene, I passed out and apparently slept for about 8 hours. The tape in the VHS machine kept rewinding itself and playing over and over again. I woke up and the movie was at roughly the same spot as when I passed out but it was completely dark outside. Zero time lapse for me. Completely lost my mind. Started freaking out and screaming because I thought I'd discovered the secret and somebody turned off the sun. I remember crying and trying to explain to my panicked family who have never let me live it down. My dad had this little toy monkey that he used to call his favorite child and tease me and my siblings with it. Not in a bad way, but it was really frustrating to us and we spent hours trying to steal it from him. Well anyways, one day we finally got it and threw it into the garbage after drawing on it and mangling it for a bit. 
We my dad laughed and searched for it a bit but basically figured we had thrown it out and gave up after a week or so. Anyways, a few years later, when I was about 17, I'm walking down the street in Toronto, I don't live in T.O., was just visiting friends, and see this little orange object on the side of the road. When I walk over to it, I pick it up and see that it was the exact same fucking monkey. It even had the black sharpie lines on it from when we drew all over it. I honestly cannot even come up with the chances of that happening, especially considering our garbage is sent to a local dump and is nowhere near Toronto. I'm late to the party, but this has freaked me out forever. I was a satellite installer and I was driving between two small towns in North Carolina, Statesville, and Taylorsville. It's about a 20-minute drive of a perfectly straight two-lane road with pretty much nothing but trees on either side. It's the middle of the day and I'm driving along listening to Howard Stern on Sirius when all of a sudden I go from wide awake to falling asleep. Meaning, one second I'm normal, and a second later my head is drooping down and eyes closing and what snaps me out of it is my car bounces like I just hit a speed bump, but I'm still in the middle of the road. Howard Stern is still in the same sentence but my GPS signal says it is lost, and then I hear recalculating and when it comes back I realize I am about 12 miles further down the road than I was, and I had missed my turn by 5 miles. My immediate thought, even though I consider myself a level-headed atheist was that I fell asleep, hit a tree and died, and was now in some weird afterlife. It was such a strong feeling that I drove to the nearest gas station, got out headed inside with a sweaty palms feeling that the cashier inside was not going to be able to see me. To my relief she did, and I bought a Red Bull. I still think I was hypnotized by the road and drove on some weird autopilot for a while, but losing GPS signal and not missing any of Howard Stern is explainable to me, I even used the serious ability to rewind and there was none of the show that I missed. In case you're wondering my butthole felt fine. My friend used to put up a recurring away message, back in the day when everybody had AIM. She was a Beatles superfan and put up a sentiment from John and Yoko, Acorns for Peace. Well, one day I was walking around my college campus thinking about it, but failing to remember the full quote. In my mind, I kept thinking, something for peace, something for peace, what the hell is that away message? Right then, some chick on a cell phone walks by me and screams out acorns. I realize this is not a super freaky story, but it made my day at the time. It's not every day someone screams out acorns in your vicinity at the exact right time. I have two stories that are just astonishing. Both of them are experiences I wouldn't believe if someone else recounted them, but I can attest to their authenticity with every fiber of my being as I write them here. The first occurred a couple of years ago. I can't recall the exact occasion, but my mother and I had gone to a and for lunch, and we were both sitting there enjoying our meals. We happened to be seated close to the washroom doors, so I noticed everyone going in and out. The first person to come out was this old man who was hobbling along. He walked past, and I looked at him and then continued with my meal. Not 30 seconds later, another man comes out of the bathroom, and at that point, I became a bit unnerved because I realized it was the exact same person. Same limp, clothing, face, everything. A couple of minutes later, the same thing happens, but this time it's an old woman. She comes out, then 30 seconds later comes right out of the bathroom again. My mom looked at me and said, you look like you've seen a ghost. I just kind of stammered a bit then wrote it off as me being mistaken. The next story is more bizarre, in my opinion, and is the single strangest occurrence of my life. This happened when I was about 9 years old, but I can still remember it vividly. We were visiting family in Nevada with my dad, and they lived in a very dry area in a fairly sizable trailer. A couple of days in, I was playing outside with my cousin, pretty much just messing around in the dirt. At some point, I look up. Right next to the house is a field, I guess? Surrounded by a wire fence, probably originally for livestock. But anyway, there's this guy standing there. This is a good 300 or more feet away, so I cannot see him clearly at all. Then something peculiar happened. As soon as I looked at this guy, I had what I can only describe as an out-of-body experience. My body went into lockdown, and I was no longer seeing through my eyes. And I wasn't just floating there or anything. I was in that man's body. Through his eyes, I could see two little shapes playing across the field, but I could just feel that he saw the shapes as animals. And then I realized he was holding a shotgun. After that, I regained control of my body and blurted out, we have to go indoors, offering no explanation to my cousin, who thought I was being odd. I didn't tell anyone because I just didn't know how to express it to other people back then. I've only since told my brothers, but I don't think they believed me. It still unnerves me when I think about it today because it's the only time I've ever lost control of my body. It felt almost like a dream but the whole thing felt like it was happening in slow motion. I used to work in music and toured with this band. The guitarist, Josh, of the band's best friend, Matt, had died a couple years back. He always talked about the kid and he seemed like a great guy. Josh always had this reoccurring dream where Matt was standing on this abandoned street which, supposedly, was metaphorical for purgatory. Josh had all these conversations with Matt in these dreams and because he had overdosed unexpectedly, he felt like his spirit was not able to move on. At the end of the dreams, Matt would take a bulb from the street light on the street they were standing in the middle of. 
Josh described these dreams in extreme detail and I could pretty much picture what the street looked like. Fast forward to about 6 months into touring with these guys. They were huge Bright Eyes fans and wanted to stop in Casadaga, Florida, Bright Eyes singer wrote an album there and it's a really creepy, spiritual medium place. It might be worth noting that 6-7 of the people I was with are all atheists. So we drive into Casadaga around 2 or 3 am and drive around. Suddenly, this big black dog comes in the middle of the road and just stops and looks at us. The guys in this band were weird as fuck and were saying things like, follow the dog. It's trying to show us something. And in my mind, I'm just thinking they are all fucking idiots. We follow this dog for a few blocks, as it was walking pretty slowly. All of a sudden, we turn a street and the dog bolts. We try to speed up but Josh says, stop the fucking van. This is it. We are all confused and he gets out of the van and looks around. This is it. This is the street in my dreams. We hang out for about 15 minutes and from the way he described the street, from having houses on the left to a park on the right, it was definitely the street. As we get in the van, a street light goes off and we just drive off. He claims he never had any more dreams about it, as that was closure on everything. My dad used to get up around 3 am every morning for work. Starting at a very early age I would wake up on my own and wander downstairs to see him before he left. One morning when I was about 4 years old, I made it to the bottom of the stairs and noticed that the front door was ajar. I opened it up and saw my father in his favorite work shirt making his way down the driveway to his truck in his typical work of it, plaid shirt and dickies. I swung the door open wide and yelled for him to come back for a hug before he left. He slowly turned around and just stared at me and started walking back towards the house. He was looking so strangely at me that it started to scare me and I began crying and asking what was wrong. Just as he had almost reached me a pair of arms encircled me from behind in a bear hug. I turned my head to see my understandably freaked out father staring at his doppelganger, in the same outfit. The double took one look at my dad and ran down the driveway, meanwhile my dad yanked me in the house and locked the door. Weirdest morning ever. Never did quite figure that one out. I would not trust my four-year-old memory of the event if it wasn't also witnessed by my father. He won't really talk about it these days but my mom has since told me that he called out of work and she spent the day reassuring him he wasn't a nutcases. Why am I always so late to these threads? Sigh. Hope this gets read. I was a sophomore in HS at my GF's house watching a movie. It was around 10 p.m. when the flick ended. I proceed to skateboard home, I only lived like two blocks away and it was a pretty quiet suburb and neighborhood. I'm skating down the hill towards a larger street, larger but never really busy, especially not at night, when I reach the intersection I nail a rock. I had planned on blasting across the street since there were no cars coming either direction. I fly off the board, skid a good three or four feet on my head, right shoulder, hip and knee. I rolled to my back and screamed out in agony. The pain was so bad I couldn't really move. I look up the road and about 30 yards off is a car coming down the way and where I landed. I was right in its path. Two lane street. I was right in the middle of his lane. My head was aligned with the wheel. I tried like hell to move. I screamed. I yelled. I couldn't do anything. Car was about 15 yards off. He doesn't see me. Makes no attempt to swerve. 10 yards. I hear him barreling down. I close my eyes. Brace. Nothing. Open eyes. Look where the car had been. Nothing. Hear the car behind me. Look where it was supposed to be in the other direction. Tail lights cruising up the road. I hadn't moved. He didn't swerve. It was like he passed through me or I passed through him. There isn't really any way he could have passed over me, not with the way I had landed and was positioned in the street. It was a little car. I can't explain it. I got up, terrified, bloody and baffled. Hobbled home and went to sleep. No one believed me. But it's fucking true. My family owns a house on Cape Cod. The previous owner was a white supremacist with an autistic son named Jimmy. Jimmy was known for putting on a trench coat and fedora, climbing trees and shooting cats and dogs with a BB gun. When my parents moved into the house, they found a bunch of Nazi paraphernalia in a bedroom. They put it in the shed, told the former owner they had a week to get rid of it and then threw it out. Of course, at the age of seven, I didn't know any of this. That's when I was visited five nights in a row by a figure in a trench coat and fedora. He didn't have any detail, he looked like a silhouette, like he was being powerfully backlit but with no light source. He would stand in the corner of the room, or sit there crouched, or sit on the bed opposite mine, my brother's bed, but he was at summer camp at the time. One time, he sat in a rocking chair, and when I looked later he was gone but the chair was still rocking. After a few nights of this, I told my parents about it. My mom called it a nightmare, but my dad was intrigued. He told me to tell the figure, Jimmy, I don't have your stuff. So the next night, when the figure appeared again in the corner of the room, I said, Jimmy, I don't have your stuff. And Jimmy walked right over to me, put his face an inch away from mine, and then disappeared. I never saw him again. Years later, I found out about the history of the house. I've often wondered if I had heard it before and somehow suppressed it and then imagined my encounters with Jimmy. 
but he was and remains entirely vivid to me. If you enjoyed these stories, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment your favorite story below. Thanks for watching.